then when they come out, they become productive citizens. That's what we need to do. The prisoners themselves love this. It's just relief. It's freedom behind bars. In fact, somebody wrote a book, a prison inmate called, Freedom Behind Bars, uh, which was their experience of meditating in the prison. I think you also work with post-traumatic post -traumatic stress yeah. situations as well, don't you? People who've been in war situations that yes. uh, are, yeah. in, are in big trouble. Well, in the U.S., of course, my country seems to love to go to war. Um, and there are a lot of soldiers coming back all the time these days from, from Afghanistan, from Iraq. Iraq yeah. And because they're exposed to such traumatic stress sometimes, they develop what's called post-traumatic stress disorder, PTHD, and the government is at a loss. The VA, Veterans Administration, at a loss what to do about it. The TM actually turns out to be a way to reverse post-traumatic stress disorder and provide an antidote for it. So people who do go into the service aren't so vulnerable to stress. This, and so finally the VA hospitals in the U.S. are really starting to latch on that here's something we can really do to improve the lives of these people. What's brand new in the States, I don't think it's been recognized anywhere else yet, is that children from inner city, troubled neighborhoods, disadvantaged neighborhoods and schools, many of the kids, many, have post, the same post-traumatic stress disorder that you find in the troops. So here's something you can give to a child, a technique to take deep rest at will, to inoculate the child against the ravages of stress, and give them a tool that they love to do, 10 or 20 minutes twice a day, that they can take with them for their whole lives to ensure the total development of the brain and success in education, success on the job, success in their family lives. It's a new trend. I'm the president of something called the David Lynch Foundation for Consciousness-Based Education and World Peace. Purely philanthropic activity. This is David Lynch, the film director. The very creative film director. Yeah. is a yeah. long-term meditator. He's, he's made some quite violent films, though, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And he's yeah. emphasizing that, look, it's okay, you know, to make a film about suffering and ignorance. Just don't live suffering and ignorance. You, should okay. not, you shouldn't be bound by it. You should be uh -huh. beyond that. So anyway, it's a very interesting, a very deeply compassionate person. We have been able to teach hundreds of thousands of at-risk children in schools all over the world, whole school programs where they embrace, adopt TM in their curriculum for student health, for student success and performance, and um, the results are utterly astonishing. A complete transformation of the schools, incredible stories out of the schools. That's philanthropic today, but in five to ten years, it'll be part of the state-funded or federally-funded educational program because the results based on research. The most powerful thing you can do, and it's so easy to incorporate. That's what education's for, to develop our full potential. So you're writing a book at the moment, I think, called Higher States. Yes. So what's, what's that book about? Higher States is about higher states of consciousness. We have the ordinary states. Deep sleep, dreaming, and waking. And everybody's on the sort of rat race of waking, wake, waking, dreaming, sleeping. The fourth state of consciousness is the meditative state. Pure consciousness. Turiya Chaitana, traditionally it's called. It's a state of unbounded universal awareness at the expense of everything else. Because at that moment of unboundedness and bliss, it's fabulous, everything else has been forgotten. That's the meditative state. When that state of inner unboundedness, inner freedom and bliss becomes permanently stabilized, so that you experience your unbounded inner nature during sleep, during dreaming, during waking activity, during anesthesia even, that's a fifth state of consciousness called enlightenment with a small e, nirvana. It's um, beginning enlightenment, you could say, but it's still great compared to where pretty much everybody is in our world. From there, glorified cosmic consciousness, also called God consciousness, develops. From there, the ultimate unity consciousness develops. We're really at that point, total brain functioning, development of mind, heart, behavior, full capacity to love. In that state where love dominates, everyone, everything is experienced as a wave of my unbounded universal self. Diversity is perceived, but the reality is of unity. And that's living the scientific truth of the unity of life.
the discovery of the unified field becomes a living reality in daily life. Been with us forever, higher states of consciousness, due to the lack of a systematic way to achieve them, they're all but forgotten, certainly not part of our educational system. That's coming back with Transcendental Meditation especially. A simple way to progress rapidly through the states of consciousness and to live our incredible God-given potential. And what is your practice these days, your meditation practice? I practice and have since my doctor prescribed it years and years ago. Yeah. I certainly have explored many, many things. But I practice Transcendental Meditation and advanced techniques of Transcendental Meditation, including what's called the TM City Program, all intended simply to accelerate the development of higher states of consciousness. Simple TM technique will fairly quickly take you to enlightenment, the stabilization of our unbounded inner blissful reality. Beyond that, advanced techniques are like fertilizers. They accelerate that growth, and I'm enjoying those advanced techniques right and now. And how many hours a day do you practice on a normal day? Most people practice 20 minutes twice a day because that's enough to get rid of all your stress and to start to grow in health and happiness. But I, de I dedicate probably an hour twice a day. Yeah, and you do it wherever you are in the world. Even on an airplane. Yeah. yeah. And do you find you lose your stability sometimes? You seem a very balanced person. Do you sometimes, if the, you know, someone does something stupid, you're driving your car, do you get pissed off with them? or Less and less. I used to lose my calm or stability a lot when I was much younger. But you know, meditation is about experiencing its inner stability, experiencing that aspect of ourself which is really invulnerable, can't be overthrown by anything. And the more aware you are of that, the less easily overthrown you are by circumstances. So if a car runs over my toe, I'm going to shout loud. But on the inner, deepest level of myself, that inner sense of unboundedness is fairly stable. One thing that intrigued me earlier was when um, we were having lunch was you said you were working more with people that were bankers and run ran hedge funds. And I wondered, how is it, you know, you think of these guys, they're just out to get their big bonuses and they don't really care. It's money, 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 fame, 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 wealth, wealth, wealth. <laughs> how is it to work with these guys for you? Well, there are two things. There's why would they do it, meditate, Good, and secondly, yeah. why would I give it to them? Well, they want it because they're in a very, very competitive field. I live and work on Wall Street these days, not in a financial firm, right. but providing enlightenment and meditation to Wall Street bankers. They want it because they want to gain the full development of their brain potential, the highly competitive alertness, creativity, intuition, sharp, and stress. They need relief. That's why they do it. Um, I'm there, decided I, I would go there because, um, firstly, there's the big homeless project I'm doing in New York City, a thousand homeless men. There are lots of disadvantaged schools in well, and let's take, We have a little time. Let's take these different projects. So you say there's a, you're working with a thousand homeless people. Right. So how does this work practically? Do you actually go around, have a team going around and saying to homeless guys, do you want to be part of an experiment with meditation? How, how does it... Well, the way we're doing it right now is there's a very, very well-known, well-respected homeless rehabilitation program in New York called the Doe Fund, and they've already got housing and job training, and it's a very good program. The problem is the failure rate. A lot of people come into the program with alcohol dependence and drug dependence, yeah. and it's very yeah. difficult to keep them yeah. drifting back. Yeah. We give the meditation as part of their program. It's incorporated into the Doe Fund training so that they gain the inner strength and the orderliness of brain functioning and freedom from addictions that meditation brings. That's, that's how we're, we're integrating into existing programs. As far as schools are concerned, we have 350 schools who've adopted TM now. It's because the teachers, the principals, the parents, the superintendents have heard about our results. This, this is New York area or around the states? Is around home? the states and even yeah. South America quite a bit.